Hello everyone, this is Vapan in a pointer at IIT Bombay from the Department of Civil Engineering. In previous lecture, we solved a problem on axial loading. Now we are, we are going to solve another problem on axial loading. So this is the problem here. The source is Kere and Gutno. So if you see here, uh, given a wooden pile driven into the earth supports a load P. Supports load P. Entirely by friction along its side. Right, see figure part A. We are going to solve part B, not part A. This is uh, somewhat more advanced than this. So you can solve this on your own. So the friction force F per unit length of pi is assumed to not for this one. Take this one. F of y is equal to F naught. The friction force varying like this in this case. The pile has length L, yes. The cross-sectional area is A and modulus of elasticity is E. Before solving this question, so where you can see this type of, uh, this type in practical, right? In practical uh, world, where you can see these type of piles. So this is the case where this can be used. And these are supported by the piles. In generally, they are supported when there are uh, water, right? You may see a uh, I mean, bridge, bridge uh, in water, right? Uh, over a dam, over a water. Then you can see these type of piles, circular piles, right? Which are driven into the air. So see, these piles are driven into the air. They are driven into the air. So this is uh, this weight and overall uh, traffic weight is supported by these piles, right? So entire load will come to here will be some P. So if you see here, that is the case, this is the entire pile, this is the entire pile and load P is acting here. The same thing you can see here, some load of the total load will come to here, right? And some load will be uh, supported by this, some load will be supported by this. Overall will be total atrophic load, right? So this load can be supported in two ways actually. So one way is friction pile. See if you uh, prevent the pile up to some li limit where there is only weak soil, where there is only weak soil, then there will be no hard uh, hard rock there. So mainly the load P is supported by friction. Mainly the load P is supported by the friction. There will be some end reaction also, but this will be very less. This is F. So most of the in this case, most of the load is supported by the friction itself. In this case, these are known as end bearing piles. In this case, it is uh, the pile is driven up to a strong strata. So there is strong strong soil or rock. So then it will create a end bearing reaction. So this reaction is R and there will be some friction also. But this will be large in this case. Okay. So here I will write here end bearing pile. Most of the load is supported by supported or resisted by reaction, right? I can say end reaction. Okay some part is resisted by friction. This is the case of end bearing pile. Okay. The case of friction pile is in the case of friction pile most resisted by friction little by end reaction. So if you see this question, this is actually a friction pile and in this question uh, he said that total load is supported by the friction means he neglected the end reaction. So here the end reaction actually which may create here is zero right in this case but actually there is little uh, end reaction. 
so we need to uh, find out the shortening delta of the pile in terms of p l e a and we need to draw the diagram of the compressive stress sigma c varies throughout the length of the pile okay so let us do the first part that is a for a we need uh, c this is uh, the case is like this f of y is equals to f not of 1 minus y by l this is friction force per unit length because you can see y by l right so it is uh, it is uh, per unit length actually so this is friction uh, force per unit length sorry not uh, from y by l it is per unit length so it is supported see the overall load is supported by the friction itself okay the overall load is supported by the friction itself So this is why. So if you, this का मतलब ये है कि uh, it is in equilibrium. So load P will be is equals to the total friction force on the pile, right? So that will be integral zero to length L, if not one minus y by L into dy, right? So P is equals to f not into integral zero to L uh, y. Into one minus y square by two. Sorry, y into two by l because we taken one common. One minus y by l into dy ka integration y minus y square by two l. We taken one y common. Okay. So if you apply p is equal to f not into l to one minus one by two. So that is f not l by two. Okay. So F not is equal to two p by l, right? This is F not, and we need to find out the uh, deformation, change in uh, means uh, change in length, right? So if you take any part, uh, suppose if you take so to say element of length d y, and if you take a uh, niche ke part, if you consider the below part. So there is friction force, right? It is at a distance y. Okay. So it is resisted by the friction. So uh, if so, if whole body is in equilibrium, then part of it also be uh, will also be in equilibrium. So to resist this, it should have some compressive normal force, right? So here it give an opposite reaction. So here also compressive. Even no opposite here also compressive, so it is compressive actually. So it will try to shorten the pile. So that is the why uh, they asked for shortening. If you see here, they directly said shortening delta because it is compressive. It is pretty much equal, right? So we need to find out what is the value of n, right? So if you take here, this is distance y. So it is like n is equal to integral n of y. I can say. n of y is equal to integral zero to y, right? Integral zero to y f not into one minus y by l dy. So it will be is equal to n into n of y is equal to n of y is equal to f not into uh, f not into y into one minus y by two l, right? So this is n of y. And we already know f not is equal to two p by l, right? So what is the d delta integral? Will be the total shortening. That will be integral f not into y to one minus y by two l into d y integral zero to l, right? So delta is equal to integral zero to l. F not y uh, y squared by two minus y cubed by three means six l, right? So if you uh, apply that, if you apply that, uh, you will get F not into l squared by two minus l squared by six, right? So delta is equals to F not into F not into L square by two minus L square by six means uh, yes, 
L square by 3. So, uh, let us write there only. So if you see delta is equal to f naught l square by 3, we already know the value of f naught. f naught is 2p by l. So if we view as 2p, if we view as 2p, sorry I forgot to write here p by a, right? It is n. It is PL by EA type thing, right? So you can have P by A here, P by A here, P by A here. So P by EA, sorry, EA by EA. So it will be 2PL by 3EA. This is the final answer, okay? This is the final answer. So for part A, so what is part B? Draw a diagram showing how the compressive stress sigma C varies throughout the length of the pile, okay? So, if you go to uh, B, see along the pile we take as Y, okay. this is origin 0, let us take X axis as sigma, sigma C. So, what is N of Y? We already know N of Y. N of Y is F naught Y into 1 minus Y by 2 N. So, N of Y equals to uh, f naught by 2L, f naught y by 2, 2, 2 minus y by L, right? We already know the value of f naught also. So n of y is equal to, f, what is the value of f naught? Value of f naught is 2P by L. Value of f naught is 2P by L. So, write 2P by L will be P into y by L to 2 minus y by L, right? So, this is n of y. What is sigma c of y? That should be is equal to n of y by a of y. a of y is a. It is a prismatic bar of constant area. So, p by a. So, p by a to y by L to 2 minus y by L, okay? So, see, what is uh, sigma c of 0? We know that it is parabolic, right? Parabolic. First thing is like parabolic. So we are, we know that uh, sigma c of zero means zero, and what is sigma c of l? Sigma c of l is p by a into l by l is one into two minus one. Means sigma c of l is equals to p by a. So initially it is zero, and if you take uh, at a distance l, at a distance l, the value is suppose this is the value. Uh, this is P by A, right? So this the variation is parabolic, right? So at L by 2, what is the value? See this value, if you take uh, this straight line, the value will be P by 2A, right? But it is parabolic. So sigma C, what is the value of sigma C of L by 2? Sigma C of L by 2 means P by A into L by 2 by L into 2 minus L by 2 by L into just this thing. So P by 2A into 2 minus means 2 minus 4. This means 3P by 4A, right? So is 3P by 4A value greater than P by 2A? Yes, because it is equivalent to 2P by 4A, right? So this is 3P by 4A. So, 3p per L by 2, the value is 3p by 4a, since it is somewhat here. So, this is 3p by 4a. So, this is the value, and we already know that it is parabolic, so it will be something like this. Okay, this is parabolic. And this is compressing stress, right? So we completed part B also. Yes, we completed the whole portion. With this, we end for today. In next lecture, we are going to solve the last problem on axial loading. So until then, take care. Bye bye from Mindcore.